Well, today I am at Sands Beach in Lanzarote and I'm going to be talking to you about the dive start. Now, it is a very tricky skill to master, so if you have already been trying it and you have any specific questions, then please drop them in the comments section below. But for now, I'm going to be explaining and showing you how to do the dive start into the swimming pool and also going into the dive start for a triathlon. Okay then, one thing that you may experience when you dive in, or you may have already experienced this, is your goggles slipping off as you dive into the water. Now, one way to fix this is obviously to make sure that your goggles are tight enough, but not so tight that they're popping your eyes out. Another trick is to actually put your goggles on first, and then if you're gonna be wearing a swim cap, then to put that on second so the goggle straps are covered by the cap. So when you dive in, the water doesn't rush over the straps and pull them down. And now we have that sorted, now we need to talk about working through and building up confidence of the dive. And it's really important if you are starting out with the dive to start from a low height. So start from the edge of the pool and as you build confidence, build that height up so you're eventually diving off the block as I'm sat on here. So with that in mind, I'm going to be breaking it down for you today and I'm going to be working through those first stages of the dive and really trying to build up that confidence. And then we will learn how to dive. Begin with your arms streamlined above your head and step forward to the edge of the pool, gripping your toes over the edge. You want to place your feet side by side underneath your hips, almost shoulder width apart, or simply enough to feel solid and stable. Now bend forward from the hips with a slight bend in the knee of around 120 degrees. All we're going to do now is slowly rock ourselves forward until we feel our weight taking us. Maintain your position as you rock forward, finishing with an extension of the legs to push you off the wall. Well, you're now airborne and need to start thinking about your entry into the water. And for this, it really helps to imagine a hoop on the surface of the water. And you've got to get your whole body through that hoop without touching the edges. So for this, you want to really maintain that streamlined position with your arms above your head and keeping your head tucked between your arms. If you maintain that and get through nice and smoothly, and practice that over and over again, you should start to build up the confidence with that positioning and entry into the water. And then we can start moving on to the full dive start. Right then, there are a couple of different dive start positions to consider. So one of them is to have your feet side by side, toes gripped over the edge, with your feet underneath your hips, almost shoulder width apart, so you feel nice and solid and stable in that position. And then with your hands, you can come down either between your feet, normally one hand on top of the other, or another that you'll see a lot of people doing is having their hands on either side of their feet. Another dive start position you might see a lot of people doing is what we call the track start position. So with that, you'd have one foot placed further forward, that's normally your stronger leg, toes gripped over the edge, and then the other foot placed a little bit further back. However, if you are starting out with a dive start, we'd normally suggest starting out with your feet side by side, just to really nail the fundamentals and technique of the dive before practicing and trying out with a track start to find out which one is your preference. Now, if you are very new to this, you're beginning with a dive start, then on this next part now, we'd like you to stay on the edge of the pool just to practice that technique. But for the purpose of this video, I'm going to be doing it off the block. So as suggested, we're starting with the traditional dive start with our feet side by side. Set yourself up on the edge, toes gripped over, hands between the feet or to either side. Now this time, we're going to bring our head right down, almost as if we're trying to tuck our head between our arms and looking back through the legs. To start the dive, you should gradually rock yourself forward exactly as we showed before. As you feel your weight going, begin to lift your arms and head in sync. As we did previously, you should then extend your legs to push off the side. Make sure your arms are almost in line with your back, ready to break the water in a nice streamlined position. Now for some people, the dive might be absolutely fine, but it's the entry and all the other stuff after that that really goes to pot. One of those might be what we call the belly flop. So what happens here is you're more or less just diving too flat and 
you literally just flop your belly into the water. So to eliminate that, you want to dive a little bit more of an arch into the dive. So going up, coming down, enter the hands first and the rest of the body follows the hands cleanly into the water. Imagine that hoop that we were discussing earlier, everything's got to go through that hoop. Another issue might be that you're diving too deep. So you're literally just cleaning the bottom of the pool with your face. And this is more or less the polar opposite. So you're just diving too high, going up and then coming straight down into the water. Or you're not lifting your arms up enough when you come off the block. To eliminate that, then you can also just tilt the hands up ever so slightly as you do enter the water. And that will just lift you back up to the surface. Well, that leads us nicely onto the underwater phase of the dive. And as I've mentioned already, just these small adjustments of the hand can really change our direction when we're under the water. During the underwater phase, you want to make sure that you stay streamlined and your head tucked in throughout. Begin kicking with either a butterfly or a front crawl leg kick. For most, this may just be a handful of kicks. Elite swimmers will use close to the regulated 15 meters underwater, but just do what's comfortable. If you're a triathlete, however, you do not want to be underwater hugely long during a mass dive swim start. Now, as you begin to surface, you want to be starting that first stroke. This can take a little bit of practice to really get the timing. Ideally, try not to breathe for a couple of strokes so that you can hold your speed off of the dive. Okay, as promised, and now for the track start. Now, this is actually my preferred method for the dive start, as it translates quite nicely to the triathlon dive start, which I will be discussing in a moment. It's actually very similar to our traditional dive start position, which has got a slightly different foot positioning. Place your strongest leg forward with toes over the edge and your other foot at a preferred distance behind you. Hold your hands to either side of that front foot and then drive forward and push with both feet, making sure you bring your feet together whilst in the air and then the rest of the dive is the same. Okay, so how is the track start useful for triathlon? Well, let me explain. So, in a triathlon dive start, they'll call you forward to a line that's just a fraction behind the actual start line. They'll hold you there for a second, they'll say something along the lines of take your marks. At that point, you'll move forward onto the actual start line and a fraction later, you're away. Now, if you were to do the traditional dive start where you move both your feet forward onto that start line, that obviously takes a little bit longer. Whereas it's much quicker just to move that one foot forward and do a track start, which is why it's often the more preferred method. You also notice that a lot of triathletes, particularly the elite triathletes, won't spend quite so long under the water. And that's simply just due to the fact that it's a mass start and they want to avoid being trampled if they stay under the water for that length of time. Now that is the dive start. I hope you've enjoyed this video today. It is a really tricky skill to get your head around. So just practice it over and over again and really build that confidence with it. If you like this video today, please hit that thumbs up button. If you'd like to see more from GTN, just click on the globe and subscribe. And obviously do let us know how you get on with the dive start in the comments section below. If you'd like to see our top swimming mistakes video, just click down here. And if you'd like to see our GCN diving challenge video, just click down here.